Welcome back to Cuenca, Ecuador, everybody. This is Warren with Travel With Us by Warren and Julie. And welcome all new viewers coming from the Cuenca Expat Magazine who recently put links to our videos on their website as well as placing a feature article about Julie and I in their January 2021 magazine. If you're not familiar with that magazine, please go to the video description and find the link to their website. And again, welcome everybody. So hey, Julie. Where are we? Does this place look familiar? Geez, yes it does. Um, this is our old neighborhood, without a doubt, and uh, it's it's trippy. Um, a lot of things are now open that we're not. And uh, uh, so anyway, we're here to visit our friend Kay. World and, Traveler Kay. Yeah, sorry, World Traveler. She's been to far more countries than us. And uh, anyway, uh, come along and see what we have to offer today. So as you can see, this building is a nice modern high rise. It's got keypad security to keep the inside secure, and it has an elevator to take you up. Julie will be taking the stairs. Now, as a reminder, if you have not given this video a like or have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. I'd like to have you come along as we look at other places and locations, check out budgets, and have our adventures. So, Hi, on to Kay. Julie, come on in. I'd like to show you my place. Great. Thanks, Kay. Glad, glad you can show us around today. It's a really, really pretty place. And you're living here alone? Yes, I'm living here alone. And a couple of things that sold me on it is the very comfortable furniture. Unlike most Ecuadorian furniture, this furniture does not sit low to the ground and it's like a Tempur-Pedic, so it's really comfortable. So it's your furniture. place is furnished? Yes, I forgot it. It's 100% furnished, I didn't buy anything. We've got the Ecuadorian made uh, dining room tables and wall unit and end tables, coffee table, all made from the carpenters locally. So that sold me on this. And then also the kitchen, came fully furnished. I didn't buy anything. All the dishes were in the cabinets, all the small appliances, six burner stove with a big oven, which is really unusual in Ecuador. And a pantry and everything. So that, that sold me on it. Very nice. And you've got a and gorgeous. You've got two balconies, don't yes. you? Yep. So this good. is balcony one? Yep. So the other thing that sold me was a large outdoor space. I don't know, this is like maybe 10 by 30 and it also came with all the plants. I didn't buy any of the plants. It came with this table and chairs. So all I had to buy was, I bought this patio furniture over here. Because it's a little bit more comfortable. Oh, very nice. nice view of the mountains out here and nice breeze most days. Very, very pretty. And we'll go on back through this way. You open the door on that side, that side you get a wind tunnel. That feels good. This is the room I'm in most. It's the office slash TV room slash third bedroom. This folds down into a futon and there's actually a closet and a dresser, so it could have been used as a third bedroom, but I don't need it for that. And, and this office. is the other balcony. This one I don't use quite as much. This is, um, I put um, the plant stand in and all the plants so I could get hummingbirds to come oh, visit me. But all of a sudden this week it's become a bee attractor. Mm. My hummingbird feeder is still bees in. Hey, bees need some love too. And yeah, but they're scaring away my hummingbirds. This is where I want to show our viewers. If you saw our YouTube video about the Airbnb when Julie and I first moved here, we are literally in this neighborhood. That pyramid roof was the roof to the bathroom and the master bath as well as the master bedroom. So this was our old neighborhood. And I have two bedrooms. First of all, the smaller bedroom, this is the, supposed to be the guest bedroom, but I use it as the master. I like it because it's got a lot of light and the bed was more comfortable. So this is the get, technically the guest bedroom and uh, but the master for now. Yeah, it's the master for now. The guest bathroom, but um, it's also the bigger bathroom. So I took this one. Very nice. It's nice to stand in your shower and look at the mountains out the window. Well, we also double painted it, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. So my apartment is unique in the fact that five years ago when the landlord bought it, there was a nightclub across the street and a lot of noise, and the tenants said, it's too noisy, we can't live here. So it forced the tenants, uh, excuse me, the landlord, to put this uh, soundproofing up. So this, all of this and this is all soundproofing on the walls, and it has a second wall. So the original wall was the outside, and now I have, so that's the original, and I have the second one, and these are fully insulated. 
So it's very unique here. But because of that, I hear no dogs, I hear no propane trucks, and I hear no car alarms. And no motorcycles. And no motorcycles. It's completely silent in this. Ecuador. I hate the Ecuador motorcycles. And then this is the master bedroom in that it's a larger room, um, but it has less light because it's only got one and a half windows. It has more storage, but I don't really need that. It also has the soundproofing. And then it has its own private bathroom. A very nice place. So can we, uh, I guess, sit down and talk about your budget? Of course. Okay, everybody. So this is really going to be an exciting video. And I know a lot of you are just dying to find out about this person that we're sitting here with and her incredibly low budget. I mean, we're talking, I think, $1,000, but that will be explained in a little bit. But we have, as we've mentioned, World Traveler K with us and Kay has been to like 60 countries I mean I've only been to like 32 and Julie's been to 29 so we combined our less <laughs> yeah so Kay is um been here for about 10 months I think mm -hmm. and she moved into this beautiful place so Kay tell us a little bit about your backstory and then tell everybody about this incredible thousand dollar budget okay um, first of all, the reason I moved to Cuenca was about, I don't know, three, four years ago, I started researching where could I retire in the world that would be affordable enough for me to have money left over to travel, because my passion is travel, as they just said. So I did a lot of research and finally settled on Cuenca because the cost of living is good, the climate is fantastic, there's a good expat community here for support, and it's, it's just beautiful surroundings here. So that's what brought me to Cuenca. And, uh, even coming this year during COVID and quarantine, I have not regretted one minute of coming here. Um, I lived in a hotel for six weeks downtown when I arrived. Then I got a great house sitting opportunity for three months. And then uh, after that, I started looking for apartments because I knew the person that was, I was house sitting for was going to be returning. I found this apartment on Gringo Post, our local newspaper. One morning, I was the first person to look at it. GringoPost.com, by the way. I was the first person to look at it and I told the realtor, don't show it to anybody else, I want it. And the things that sold me on this apartment again was the comfortable furniture, the location, and the outdoor space. So those have been great. Um, my budget, um, my rent is $500 a month. That includes my electric, super easy to pay. I go to the bank, pull 500 out, put it right back into my landlord's account. I don't even walk away from the ATM machine. I never see her, it's really easy. So are you, so you're taking the money and depositing it right into her account yep. at the ATMs? Yep. Yep. I just pulled out and put it right back in and it's just around the corner, maybe two, 300 feet from my door. Nice. Um, in addition, I have to pay my aliquota, which in the USA would be called HOA. And my aliquota, uh, is 112, 115. It varies by two or three bucks a month because it's my water and my gas and my they call it the building security, the building maintenance. I do have a parking spot down downstairs that covers that, and also a storage unit in the basement that covers that. Um, and so now we're looking at your rent was how much? 500. And your aliquota? 112, 115. So you're at 615. So for your social life and your groceries going out, you're covering that with the rest of the 385? Um, I have to pay 35 a month for my um, internet. internet. That's the only additional bill I pay is $35. And that's deducted out of my account automatically every month. A lot of people here complain about how to pay their utility bills. It can be a little bit of a pain, but mine are super easy. Okay, so, so, so you're at 650? Yes. And so let's talk about uh, what, what do you spend to go out? And, and I know you have a social life. I see you all the time. <laughs> She's joining us for lunch on many, many occasions, typically on, on four or five times a month. And then um, we play disc golf uh, together down at uh, Percy Park. That costs nothing, of course. Right. And uh, so there's a lot of activities, but um, going out, your groceries, uh, how does that break out? Um, my social life is pretty cheap as as Lauren just said my disc golf um, two mornings a week is free pickleball one afternoon a week is free I do Pilates um, two days a week and my class is about two dollars to take a Pilates class wow. so super cheap that's pretty much my social life other than going out so I do eat out at least once a day um, if I eat out for breakfast or lunch it's three dollars 
If I eat out for dinner, it may be a little bit more, maybe seven or eight dollars. Um, I've never kept exact track of my food, but I'm just guessing um, with the little bit of groceries I buy and the eating out, um, probably about 300 to 350 a month for the for my food food slash or grocery slash restaurant budget. Now, when you're going shopping, are you going to the popular grocery store over here, going to the Mercado or the Tiendas? Where do you do most of your shopping? Well, for me, because I eat out a lot, I don't cook a lot at home, I don't need to buy enough food to go all the way to the Mercados. So literally a block away is um, a little tienda. Maria is my little tienda lady. I buy all my fruits and veggies from her. I went over there this morning about milk and eggs. I can hand her three or four dollars and come home with enough fruit and veggies for the entire week. And then I go next door to Popular when I need to buy things like, um, I buy some chicken there or pork chops or I get um, like di my Diet Coke, <laughs> that's my vice. I get my Diet Coke from Popular, uh, flour, sugar, those kind of things from Popular. So pretty much all my shopping is between those two stores that are next door to each other, a block from my house. And do you have any expenses as far as for medical insurance or medical coverage? Oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, so my medical insurance here, I currently have private insurance. I do qualify now for public. I haven't switched it over yet. My private insurance is $39.50 a month, and um, that's only with a hundred dollar deductible, so that's really good. Wow. Yeah. So, so we might as well say that you're a thousand thirty nine a month yeah. on your your budget. Yeah. So that's incredible. Now, you are a single female living in a third world country. Danger, you're, you're, I'm, I'm sure everybody's like, oh, is that dangerous? And I, I know, and you know, and Julie knows, we've seen and know a lot of single females here. But what do you think about being here as a single female in Ecuador, safety-wise and life-wise? Well, just like anywhere else in the world, you have to be conscious of your surroundings. When I'm walking down on the river, whether it be day or night, or walking through El Centro, I'm always walking and looking around me. I always wanna know people that are within an arm's reach of me. And the reason for this is, um, especially now there's more pickpocketing going on. I'm not really afraid, I guess, of being attacked. And just to specify, because of now we are in the COVID-19 time frame, and she's talking about there's a lot of people that are, um, I guess, no longer employed or are here as um, economical, economic refugees from neighboring countries that are Alpan handling. Um, so go ahead. Yes. So I, it's more of, um, I don't want you know, my phone to be stolen or my, you know, my ID to be stolen or something like that. So I try to be aware of my surroundings that I'm not within an arm's reach of someone who could snag my purse from me. But I have never been, uh, felt unsafe even at night walking here that I was gonna, that I was gonna be in danger bo with bodily harm. Never felt like that. And she walks miles <laughs> a day. <laughs> well now I have a scooter, so I actually ride my scooter more and walking a little less. And people think, uh, friends have told me they think I'm crazy that I bought the scooter, but I had a big motorcycle in the States, I missed it. And here, you can buy an electric scooter for a very reasonable price and it's free because you're just charging it. You don't have to put gas in it, no driver's license required, no insurance required, and no registration required. What was the price of your electric scooter? I bought my 1500 watt electric scooter for 1250. And I'm gonna take a picture of this and it will be shown here in a second. Okay, so that's really an incredible lifestyle that you have for $1,000. And um, I guess our next uh, uh, question is, do you, anything you wanna share that we didn't bring up before we head out to lunch together? Well, I just think it's a beautiful country. The people here are very humble and sweet. I would say come on over for a visit and check it out and see what you think. Okay, well, thank you, Kay. We appreciate your time and I'm sure that the viewers do. And we will, um, be going to lunch and we'll show you a couple pictures of whatever we're eating. We don't even know where we're going yet, but we'll, 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 we'll show you what we're eating and what it costs. So thanks everybody. Thank you. So as a reminder, if you haven't given this video a like or subscribe, do that now. And also as a reminder, Julie and I retired early by investing. If you want to know how we're funding our retirement, go to the video description and check out one of the investment strategies we use. So looking around the suburb of Sucre, there's a lot of eating options from fast food, ice cream, parlors. Check out this menu board. You have uh, places that are kind of off the wall Mexican. You got coffee bistro locations. You have just one sushi place, but two sushi restaurants. 
And we ended up going to a little seafood shrimp location that Kay likes. And she had her $4 lunch, a little bit more than her normal price. But we all left here satisfied. So now as a reminder, Julie and I, we're traveling the world. We're going to be looking at budgets in different countries, different cities, seeing what it's like to live there. And we'll really focus on whether or not you can live there on a retirement budget as well. So please join us. Give us a subscribe. Come along on our next journey. And we will be doing the tourist things and adventures. And we'll have those videos up as well. So anyway, thanks for joining us today. And until next time, have a great day, everybody.